Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat Shalom. This is the day that Yah has made, and we want to rejoice and be glad in this day. Hallelujah. Yah is good. And a very interesting um, topic. <laughs> Are aliens and demons the same? Interesting. I asked the AI that information on Bing, and it was kind of interesting <laughs> what, what it said. I, I'll share it with you. But pretty much... Um, we're going to be discussing this, and I got some pretty interesting things I want to show you. So I want y'all to wake up, pay attention. Hallelujah. Okay? So, now, let's go. Uh, we're going to have a song first. So y'all give me a song. to this lesson are aliens and demons the same okay um i've often wondered about that because i've seen a demon before okay i've seen a demon twice okay and the first time i seen a demon i was at um a person's house years ago um this was a long time almost 40 years ago probably around 35 years ago and I was we were watching something on TV and there was a mirror by the TV not far from the TV that was showing the hallway behind us and as we were watching TV I looked in the mirror and I saw a demon <coughs> passing through the hallway and so when I saw this thing I looked and when I because I, I had the Holy Spirit at the time too so when I saw it I frowned because when I saw it I did it like this and when I did that, it, it it knew that I could see it. And so it stopped in the middle of the hall, and it did something like this here, and then it went into the bathroom. And I said, man, I just saw a demon run into your bathroom. And the person was so messed up over there, they put me out the house. They sure did. They put me out and said, you, you get, get out of here, man. You see a demon, well, you got to go, you know. So I was like, man, I'm telling you, I saw it. And they, they was like, you know. But anyway, long story short, the person later contacted me a few days later and said they saw the demon in their bathroom 
and they went in the back when they saw it, they started um, casting it out and it shriveled up in the corner of the tub or something and then vanished away. And I was like, wow, you know? But anyway, what was amazing about it is the way this thing looked, it was small, it wasn't a big tall demon, it was a small demon like a child. It was completely white, arms were longer, and it had a huge head. Interesting. Um, I don't remember seeing a mouth or nose. I just remember the head and the eyes, and it's a huge head, real skinny, small and white with long arms. And so I said, man, I didn't put two and two together over the years. I said, man, that looked like, it kind of looked like an alien. If somebody saw it, they probably would have thought it was an alien, you know? But anyway, I want to share that with y'all. Um, before we dive deep into this, I got to cover some scriptures first. Because you have to understand what's going on in the airwaves out here. Dealing with spirits and demons and angels and all this. You have to understand what's going on first before I can really dive into this thing. So let's cover these scriptures. I'm going to try to take the next 15 minutes and cover the bulk of these scriptures. And then after that, we're going to go right into some deeper things and show you what's going on. With this, with this angel and demon, alien and demon thing, okay. Um, let's go to uh, 1 Kings chapter 3. And so, I want to say this to you. I want you to pay attention, okay. 1 Kings chapter 3, I'm going to read 2 and 3. Okay, before I read that, I want to share something with you. The scripture talks about high places, and it talks about heavenly places. Okay? There's a difference in the two. Okay? High places, it talks a little bit about it in this. We're going to go where it talks about it in the scriptures. Okay, let's, let's just go to these passages. Okay, this is 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 2 and 3. It says, only the people sacrificed in high places because there was no house built unto the name of Yahuwah until those, until those days. And Solomon loved Yahuwah walking in his statutes, in the statutes of David, his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. So notice this come out, they went to high places um, on the earth pretty much. There was a high place around them. They went to that high place to sacrifice. So there's something about the high places. Interesting, huh? So, go check the door, y'all. And so, basically, these high places are is usually a, a, a place where a person want to worship. And... Um, <laughs> They would set up idols and things like that on high places, or they would set a place to sacrifice unto Yah on high places. So now let's go to Psalms chapter 78. Psalms chapter 78, and let's look at verse. Seventy-eight, verse 58. And this is what it says. For they provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their graven images. So what they were doing was they would, they would bring these um, graven images and, and they would take them up on these high places and they would uh, worship these false gods at these high places. Okay, and so if you go to Jeremiah chapter 19 now, <coughs> Jeremiah 19 verse 5, it says, they built also the high places of Baal. <coughs> to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal. 
which I commanded not, nor spake it, neither came it into my mind. So you see, they were sacrificing, they were even burning their children on these high places. That sounds cruel, don't it? Yeah, but this is the kind of thing that these, these people were doing to try to uh, reach these spirits or these demons, okay? Because they were worshiping false gods, they were trying to get something from these demons, which y'all told them. If you serve me, I'll give you milk. I'll give you a lamb flow of milk and hay. I'll bless you. I'll give you all these things. But nobody wanted to get those things through Yah. They wanted to do wickedness to try to get these things. So that's why they were worshiping idols and false gods. They, the god of Baal. They needed rain to come down on their crops. So they would worship these other gods to try to get rain. The sun god, because they needed the sun. They needed all these things. They would worship these false gods, basically, in high places. So now we have this New Testament scripture that comes out of nowhere. Well, it came from Paul. Paul wrote this, but listen to what he says here. If you go to Ephesians chapter 6 now, and this scripture just comes like bam, right in your face with it, right? Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to look at verse 12, okay? And it says, uh, we're going to go before that. Uh, starting in verse 10, it says, Finally, brother, be strong in Yahuwah and in the power of his might. Put on the old whole armor of Yah, that ye might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rules of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So, notice it says, in high places. Right? These high places that he's referring to are not the heavenlies. These are places on earth. High places on earth. So when you see the reference of high places, it's talking about on earth, right? But watch this. Let's look at heavenly places. Heavenly places talking about in heaven, in Yah, in Yahusha, in the heavenly places, right? So let's go to this CD scripture here. You're going to see a big difference in them, right? So Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. And it says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us were who believe according to his work to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in the Mashiach when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. There it is. Set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Now pay attention. Where is this at? Far above principalities. So it's far above the principalities. Far above the power, the might, the dominion, and every name that is named. Not only in this world, but, in the, but also in that which is to come. So it's letting you know that these heavenly places are far above the high places. Where you have these entities and spirits moving about, right? Pay attention. So now, watch this. And this is where the blessings are. So if you're dwelling in high places, you ain't going to get many blessings. But if you're dwelling in heavenly place of places, that's where the blessings are. Pay attention. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Look at verse 3 here. It says, Blessed be um, the Elohim of our, the Elohim and Father of our Master, Yahushua Mashiach, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings, where are they? In heavenly places in the Mashiach. They are in heavenly places in the Mashiach. You see? That's where all those spiritual blessings are. They have, see, that's why Yahushua always see, made this statement. He said, Seek ye first the kingdom of Yah and his righteousness, and all these things can be added to you because they're in him. So when you seek him, all those things, they come automatically. There's no stopping them, right? <clears throat> Pay attention. Now, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. And let's look at verse 6. So, when a believer is first becomes born again, this is what happens to that believer. Yah takes that believer and he sets him into an heavenly places. That's what it says here. It says, uh, verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, hath he quickened us together with the Mashiach. By grace we are saved. 
and have raised us up together and made <coughs> us sit together in heavenly places in the Mashiach. So he made us sit together in these heavenly places in the Mashiach. So, pay attention. When you're in these heavenly places in the Mashiach, you're above the principalities and the powers and the spiritual wickedness in high places. You're above all of those things. Pay attention. Those things are in the earth. They're not in the heavens. Okay? So that's why he said in heavenly places. Now watch this, right? Pay attention because it's going to get deep now. So, these are positions of spiritual powers. So when it names these places, when it names these things, when, it, when you go back and you look at Ephesians, let's go back to chapter, uh, what was it? Chapter 1. And when we go here, we look at verse 20 again. It says, far above principalities. So you got principalities, you got powers, you got might, you got dominions, right? <coughs> you got those four things in the name, right? You don't just have those, right? When you go to Ephesians 6, what do you have? Ephesians 6. I'm sorry, not, not Ephesians. Yeah, Ephesians 6, verse 12. This is what it says, not verse 12. Yeah, verse 12. It says, principalities, there's powers again. Those two are named again, principalities and powers. Notice it says, but then it goes, it says, rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness are two more things that it named. These are all positions of spirits and demons. These principalities and some are above others in rankings like soldiers and we talked about this before, right? And so pay attention. This is what's going on, right? So now, when you see these positions, then it makes sense why we have archangels. Because archangels regulate the airways and above, and they, they come on earth too. They go back and forth, right? The archangels, right? And you have your angels, which are your cherubims and your seraphims, right? And we know that Archangels can be cherubims or seraphims. We know that Satan was the anointed cherub. The scripture talks about Satan being the anointed cherub. Okay? But watch this, right? Let's go to Genesis chapter 28. verse 12 and it talks about a dream that Jacob had and it says and he dreamed and behold a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven and behold the angels of Yah was ascending and descending upon it so they're going up and down so when Jacob saw this ladder he saw angels going to and four to and to and fro from the earth to the heavens, back and forth. This is happening all the time. These angels are going back and forth, right? And because they have a job that they're doing, right? These angels going back and forth. So that's the angels. But guess what? You have spirits too. You have good and bad spirits, right? Scripture talks about good and bad spirits. Now we're going to talk about a good spirit. Let's go to the Psalms. Chapter four, 143, and you'll see where I'm going with all this because I need you to, uh, I need to kind of re, re, uh, bring all of this back to your mind about what's going on, so you'll see what's what's happening in 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 the in this other realm that you can't see these demons and spirits what they're doing right. So now, in Psalms chapter 143 verse 10. Psalms chapter 143. <coughs> And verse 10, this is what it says. He says, teach me to do thy will. This is David talking. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my Elohim. 
Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Thy spirit is good. Lead me. Now notice there's a small s there. Thy spirit is good. So there's a spirit that was leading David, right? Yah sent a spirit to lead, lead David. We're going to read that again. Watch this. Here's another passage that says the same thing. This is Nehemiah chapter 9. Nehemiah chapter 9, and this is verse 20. And this is what it says here. It says, Thou gavest me also thy good spirit to instruct them. See that? And withheldest not thy manner from their mouth, and gavest them water for their thirst. So you see, Yah gave them a good spirit to instruct them. So he sent a good spirit to instruct them, right? So Yah can send a good spirit, or Yah can send a bad spirit, right? I'm going to show you some of these evil spirits. Now watch this. Let's go to Luke. Chapter 7, verse 21. <clears throat> Luke chapter 7, verse 21. It says, And in the same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues, and evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. So we heal people of these evil spirits, right? So these evil spirits, some people have been possessed by these evil spirits, okay? Acts chapter 9, verse 13. I'm sorry, chapter 19, verse 13. Chapter 19, verse 13. Then... Then certain of the vagabond, um, well, they say Jews here, but exorcists took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits in the name of Yahuwah, Yahusha HaMashiach, saying, We adjure you by Yahusha, whom Paul preached. And you know what happened in that story. The demons that was in the man jumped on those um, exorcists and beat them and sent them out um, hurt and wounded. Okay. So you see, this was an evil spirit, right? So, watch this. These evil spirits are out here just like God sent good spirits. Y'all can also send evil spirits, okay? In Judges chapter 9, verse 23, listen to what it says here. Judges chapter 9. I'm trying to read these kind of quick so I can get right to the bulk of what I'm talking about here, so if I, if I appear to be rushing, this is why, because <laughs> I want to get to this other part. So if, um, Judges chapter 9, verse 23, then Yah sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. And the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech. So you see this? Yah sent the evil spirit this time. Yah sent that evil spirit. Again, in 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14. It says, but the spirit of Yahuwah departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from Yahuwah troubled him. So, in the next verse it says, and Saul's servant said unto him, behold now, an evil spirit from Yah troubleth thee. So Yah sent this <laughs> evil spirit upon him, right? So, understand again, Y'all can send these evil spirits, okay? So now, these demons, we got the demons. So we talked about the 
high places where these um, um, principalities and, and spiritual wickedness rule the high places, right? We talked about the heavenly places where Yah and his angels pretty much rule, right? The heavenly places, we talked about the positions of spiritual powers, the archangels, uh, the Satan being anointed cherub, the spirits, the angels, the good and bad spirits. Now we're going to mention about demons, okay? Now, what are demons? We're going to go to the book of Enoch for this one here, okay? This is the book of Enoch, and it looks like chapter 1, verse 15, but they got Enoch 8 here. So, it could you know, the book of Enoch is kind of separated in an odd way. But anyway, I'm going to read this to you, what it says. It says, this is put from the book of Enoch. It says, but now the giants who were begotten by the spirits and flesh, they will call themselves, wait a minute, they will call them evil spirits on the earth. For their dwelling will be on the earth. You hear that? So the demons, they dwell on the earth. And the spirits that have gone from the forth from the body of their flesh are evil spirits. For from humans they came into being, and from the holy watchers was the origin of their creation. Evil spirits they will be on the earth, and evil spirits they will be called. The spirits of heaven, in heaven is their dwelling, and the spirits begotten on earth, the earth is their dwelling. So it's like, you know, the spirits is in heaven, they dwell in heaven. So we're talking about the angels and all of them, because the, the scripture does call angels ministering spirits. Sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation. So he said the spirits in heaven, they, they, they deal in heaven, although they go back and forth. The spirits in heaven deal in heaven, they go back and forth. But the uh, evil spirits, they don't. They only dwell on earth, okay, until their judgment. So now that we've covered that, we're going to talk about one particular spirit, fallen angel, that came down, and this particular fallen angel is the father of the Anik. Now, some of you are familiar with Anik. The scripture called the Anik were giants in the land. So, we're going to look at this here real quick. Let's go to Genesis now. Now it's going to get deep. So, now I want you all to pay attention because it's going to get real deep here. So, Genesis chapter 6, verse 4. It says, And there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that the sons of Yah came unto the sons of Elohim, came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, and they became mighty men, which were of old men of renown, and they had actually became giants. These were the giants, okay? So now, watch this. Now let's go to Numbers chapter 13, verse 33. Numbers chapter 13, verse 33. Okay, this is what it says. And there we saw the giant. So this is when Yah sent, uh, told Moses to send um Spies, 12 spies to go spy out the land of Canaan, right? The promised land. So they go spy out the, the promised land, and this is what they saw. Now, notice what they said here. Now, there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak. See, this Anak was a giant. They saw the sons of Anak. Anak was the son of a fallen one, which come of the giants and were in our own sight as grasshoppers. He said they were in their own sight as grasshoppers. Now I want to show you something here, right? When he said that they were in their own sight as grasshoppers, this is what you would see. 
Now, if you could see in this image here, it's showing you the different heights of some of these giants. Some of them were as tall as 30 something feet, 36 feet tall, these giants. You understand? So that's why they said, man, we like a grasshopper to them, right? Because these giants were so big, they would look up at these giants and they, they would say, man, we, we ain't no way in the world we're going to fight these giants, right? But let me tell you, this is the scriptures, right? That these giants were in the land like this, right? These tall giants. And they were huge, right? And so some of these giants, they stood over men. They were like towers, right? And so that's why they were, because Goliath was a giant, but Goliath was only about 10 feet tall, maybe 11. You know what I mean? That's a big deal. Giant. These giants were giants to Goliath. You get what I'm saying? And Goliath was a descendant of the Anakin, if I'm correct, of the An of Anak, right? One of the children of Anak. I could, I'm going to research that and bring that to you. But anyway, according to the book of Numbers, Anak was the forefather of the Anakim. And... Um, according to Deuteronomy uh, 2.11. So let's go to Deuteronomy 2.11. Let's look at that scripture. Deuteronomy. Okay. 2 verse 11. Okay. It says, The Enims e e e e dwelt therein times past, a great people and many tall as the Anakims. <clears throat> so remember when we did, um, wait a minute, let's keep going. It says, which were also, which also were accounted giants as the Anakims, but the Moabites called them e Emims, right? And then you get the Horims also dwelt in Seir. So these are actually different giants. Now, if y'all, if, if any of you have seen White It Out chapter 6, where we talk about the seed of the fallen. And we talked about these giants and stuff, right? We talk about a lot of these these particular things in that. So if you all haven't seen that, go and see White It Out 6 on um, the seed of the fallen. And it, it, you'll see what it's talk, what we talked about in those, um, dealing with these giants and the emims and who they were and everything, right? But it says that they were just as tall as the Anakims, right? Now, I want you to pay attention to the name Anik, right? Look at the name Anik, right? Or Anakim, right? Pay attention to that because I want you to see something, right? So, in Egyptology, pay attention. I'm going to read this to you. It says, the Egyptian text in the Middle Kingdom this is between um, 2055 and 1650 BC. Mention a list of political enemies in Canaan. One of their political enemies in Canaan was a group called Lil Anik or People of Anik. Isn't that interesting? In Canaan was also enemies with the Egyptians. Now pay attention, because it's going to get really good. So now, some of you are familiar with Samaria, right? Or summer, the land of summer. If you do your research, if you ever did any research into history, you'll discover one of the earliest civilizations was a civilization of summer. <coughs> okay? This civilization of summer um, uh, produced the people that were referred to as the Sumerians, right? Not not Sumerians as what you would see in the scriptures in the New Testament. This spelt different, okay? But anyway, these are people that dwelt in the land of, some, of summer, right? Now, this was an ancient civilization that was in the area of Mesopotamia, okay? Now, these people of summer, there was a Sumerian tablet that was found. And... Researchers got the researching and, and trying to interpret this tablet. And guess what they found out about the Sumerian tablet? This Sumerian tablet talks about how 
the people, they believe the people uh, were created by Anik or Enki, right? Anki or Enki were supposedly gods. Pay attention. These were gods that came down to the earth. Now, this is in the Sumerian tablets. I'm going to show you a picture of the Sumerian tablets real quick. Let me show you that. The Sumerian tablets. That's the Sumerian tablets. Okay. Now, Enki... This person, Enki, or this, this entity, or so-called God, which I believe was would have been looked upon like an alien. <laughs> That's what I said. It's going to get deep, right? This Sumerian God is a Sumerian God of water, knowledge, crafts, and of creation. And one of the Anunnaki. Sound like the Anakin, right? <laughs> It almost sounds the same. The name is almost sounding exactly the same, right? Now, if this tablet talks about a group of gods that came down to rule the earth, right? And they, um, they, the translation actually states that the Sumerian gods came to earth and they settled on a mountain. Sounds just like the book of Enoch. Where these fallen angels came down and dwelt on the mountain, right? And their goal was to change the earth, including altering DNA. It's in the Sumerian tablets. I hear me? Alter DNA. So what were they trying to do with this altering DNA? I'm going to tell you what they were doing. Now, they began to alter DNA using the DNA of animals. So they would use all these animals, uh, so many animals. There was something I was reading where they were talking about um, 200 of, of donkeys and other animals that they were breeding these animals and using, changing the DNA of these animals with humans. And what ended up happening is they ended up creating some very strange looking monsters. Mm. And guess what? It's recorded in the Book of Giants, which is also another lost book, right? So now, pay attention, right? So now, in the Sumerian text, there's another god by the name of Satan. Mm, mm, mm. Interesting, huh? He is called the administrator, the Sumerian god administrator. And he was often called a serpent because he looked reptilian-like. This is all in Sumerian tablets, y'all. Are you hearing me? Sumerian tablets. Now, pay attention. Satan. S-A-T-A-M. It says S-A-T-A-N. Interesting, huh? Now, I'm going to tell you where I'm going with this, right? So now you have these, these angels coming down, right? The people are looking and seeing these angels, and they're thinking that they're gods, and they're worshiping these angels like gods, right? And these angels got down and you read the book of Enoch, how they began to change DNA and teach people all of this crazy stuff, teaching them about this, teaching women, to, teaching men, this, teaching men how to create this and create that, the battle and using iron and all this kind of stuff, right? So now we have something that's very interesting I want to show you here, right? Now, this is a statement that Aleister Crowley made. Pay attention to the statement that he made. He said... Today, they call angels, and they're called angels and demons. He said, today they call them angels and demons. Tomorrow, they will call them something else. Extraterrestrial aliens. This is what Alistair Crowley said, right? But I'm going to show you something strange. Something that Alistair Crowley did. Alistair Crowley would do these rituals, right? Because he was a Satanist. His mother, his, his mother actually called him the beast. She believed he was like the beast, the Antichrist. That's how wicked this man was, right? So, Alistair Crowley would have these seances and he would do all these crazy rituals, right? And um, he would do these, these it was a, a, some type of workshop that he would do um, and they would try to contact these entities, right? And he was contacted by an entity 
by the name of Lamb. That's the name of the entity. His name is L-A-M, right? Now, I'm going to show you an image of this entity that contacted Alistair Crowley and gave him all this information. So a lot of the writings and a lot of stuff that Alistair Crowley was doing came from this entity, this demon, right? But I'm going to show you an image of it. Watch this. This is an image of Lamb, Alistair Crowley's demon. Mm, mm, mm. Isn't that interesting? This thing looks just like an alien. Alistair Crowley's demon. Isn't that interesting? Mm. <laughs> Isn't that something? Lamb. That's the demon that contacted, that Alice Crowley was able to summon. And it came up and this is what it looked like. Okay? And look at the alien. So you see the difference in the two? They look just alike. And I'm going to tell you, when I saw a demon that time years ago, that's what it reminded me of, the same thing. Just like this, right? So, Aliens are really demons. Interesting. This is what he looked like. Lamb. Creepy. <laughs> it's really creepy. Right? So, now that I got your attention. <laughs> I know that got your attention, right? So, now that I got your attention, I want to read some information from the Book of Giants. So, I'm going to go to the Book of Giants. Some of you may not have the Book of Giants. You can purchase it on the internet. It's called the Book of Giants. It was um, it's an early book. It was actually um, in Aramaic, written in Aramaic, uh, or, uh, around uh, 300 BC, 300 years BC. So this is before the time of the Messiah. Okay, so I'm gonna read this. I think it's a very important book because it lines right up with the Book of Enoch. Okay. So, let's read this, the Book of Giants. Okay, this is what it says. It says, These fallen angels knew the secrets of all things. At this time, sin was great in the earth. The wicked angels killed many people and begot giants with mortal women. The wicked formal angels consumed everything that the earth produced. The great fish, the birds in the sky, all the fruit of the earth, all kinds of grain, fruit of the trees, even beasts and reptiles they committed sin against. All the creeping things of the earth they observed watched all earthly things. They performed every harsh deed with harsh utterance upon male and female creation and upon and among humanity itself. 200 angels have persuaded to leave heaven for earth. The 200 angels seized 200, 200 donkeys, 200 asses, 200 sheep, and rams of flocks, the flocks, 200 goats, 200 beasts of the field for every animal and every bird for experiments in breeding with humans. Mm. And all types of miscreed uh, generation. So watch this here, right? So pay attention. So now you wonder where all these myths come from? You know, Pan and um, uh, um, Satarius and some of these creatures that probably half horse, half man, right? Some got the uh, uh, bafflement with the goat legs, right? A human, human torso and body, right? And you see these little uh, elves and all these weird other little things, fairies and, and, the, oh, and the, the trolls and all these strange things, right? That's where they got that mythology from. It was actually something that took place on the earth. And they knew about it. These monsters and stuff, right? 
So watch this. As a result, monsters were created among all the provision due to mingling animal seed with mortal <coughs> women. Similar to Egyptian gods, satyrs, and possibly even dinosaurs, the historian Josephus mentions that Enoch had business in Egypt, then called Sarad. So this was an excerpt that somebody put in here, right? It says, the monsters sought out flesh, which would destroy and pervert. Monsters and giants would arise who were lacking in true knowledge because they were abominations. Meantime, the earth grew even more corrupt and giants more mighty. They considered trying to persuade other angels to come upon the earth. Otherwise, their tyranny might ultimately perish and die. All the time, they were causing great corruption in the earth. So, I want to show you this image here. These these um, giants and monsters. Now, this is amazing here because when you think about it, you're reading this the book of giants. It talks about how these um, giants and the and they brought these monsters, right? It says, the fallen ones defiled all creation and begot giants and monstrous creatures and corrupted all the earth, which was defiled by bloodshedding, all the hands of giants, but this did not suffice them, and they were seeking all the time to devour, destroy many much more. The monsters acted, attacked all creation. So the monsters attacked all creation. Okay. The giants are now troubled with Pentheus, with, uh, with dreams, and Maui reports his dream to the rest of the giants. And I found that strange. His name was Maui. Interesting, huh? I tell you, some strange stuff in these some of these scriptures. There's some strange things. Now listen to this, and we don't go down to this other part here. I want y'all to see this part here. It says, the vision is a cause of cursing and sorrow. So apparently in this vision, I think it was talking about um, the destruction that's going to come upon all the giants and the, um, and the monsters. And so they all had a meeting. <laughs> that's why I got the image there. They all actually had a meeting where they came together to meet and discuss this dreams that this one particular um, um giant was heaven who was the son of a fallen one okay and so i'm going to go down to this here it says use your strength the group counseled then uh, oya oya said to hey ha these are other guy other um, giants this doom is not for us, but for Azazel. Because we know Azazel was, was the head angel who um, who caused all the other angels to come down and, and do this thing with the, with the women, pretty much. Uh, one of the wicked angels. For he showed most corruption to humanity. They, the good angels, surely will not let all their loved ones, the giants and the monsters, be neglected. We are not to be cast down. You addressing the crowd, you addressing the crowd of the giants, angels and fallen, angels, the fallen angels, and monsters have strength and can resist. The giants, however, realize that fighting heaven is futile. So they knew there ain't no point in trying to fight heaven. Okay. So now I want you to understand something. So now you uh, understand, you when you think about some of these movies, huh? I don't know if you, some of you, I don't think y'all have seen those movies because these are some old movies that came out years ago. There's a movie that came out years ago that was called Highlander. Y'all remember the movie Highlander? Where these um, men were fighting. They, they, they were immortal. So they couldn't die unless they got their heads chopped off. 
but they were just battling back and forth with swords and been battling throughout time. That's really what that's about. These are supposed to be fallen angels or the seed of the fallen angels battling because that's what they did back in those days. They battled all the time. They fought all the time, right? Now, this is what it says. It's uh, Gilgamesh Gil speaks. I am a giant, and by my mighty strength in my arm, I can vanish any one mortal. I have made war with them mortals in the past, but I am not now able to stand against my opponents who reside in heaven and dwell in holy places. So as you see, the demons on earth and the giants and the Nephilim and all these spirits on earth, they can't really deal with those that dwell in heavenly places. That's why the angels in heaven are more powerful than them, right? It says, and not only this, but they are in fact stronger than I am. The day of revening wild beasts has come that the wild man, as I am known, then a hot then Oya said unto him, I have been forced to have a dream. The sleep of my eyes vanished so I could see a vision. Now I know that on the field of battle we cannot win. And that's what Gal Gal Galgamesh was another um, um, giant that was saying. So basically, this is what was going on in the book of giants tell you that they, they were battling back and forth. So then when they died, their spirits didn't go into heaven or into hell. These spirits roamed the earth as wicked spirits, as evil spirits, possessing people and doing all this wickedness. And when they appear before people, they look like demons. Mm, mm, mm. Isn't that interesting? When they appear before people, they look like demons. So... There's another angel I want to talk about. There's an angel by the name of Metatron. Anyone familiar with the name Metatron? Any of y'all ever heard that name? Metatron, okay. I'm going to tell you about Metatron. Well, if you do your research, um, Metatron came about through the book of Enoch. Okay, you have Enoch, the book of Enoch 1, the book of Enoch 2, and then there's the book of Enoch 3. I do not recommend diving into the book of Enoch 3 because I do not agree with the book of Enoch 3. I believe that the book of Enoch 3 is a false book, and I'm going to tell you why I believe that, right? The book of, book of Enoch is a false book because it was written by a rabbi by the name of, see if I got his name here. Uh, bear with me one moment. Rabbi Ishmael. Okay. It's Meta, and it talks about this archangel named Metatron that came and and um, show, gave him a vision and showed him some things, right? This archangel Metatron. This Rabbi Ishmael isn't a rabbi from back in the days of the Messiah or nothing like that. This rabbi was around, probably around a thousand years ago, if I'm correct. I think it was around a thousand years. Okay. So, this book of Enoch, I'll show you what it says here. The book of Enoch 3. The book of Rabbi Ishmael, the high priest. He was considered a high priest. And the elevation of Metatron is a Jewish apocrypha book. So this is a Jewish apocryphal book. So it's not related to the other biblical books, right? Rabbi Ishmael was a third generation Tana and is a leading figure in Makurba mysticism. So this Rabbi um, um, Ishmael was into mysticism. Magic. That's right. That's why I said I don't. I don't accept this book because I know it deals with mysticism and magic. As a matter of fact, in the Jewish uh, in Jewish apocrypha and early Kabbalah, Metatron is the name that Enoch received when he was transformed into an angel. 
And we know Enoch was not transformed into an angel. That's not in the scriptures. Enoch was not transformed into an angel and he was not given the name Metatron. But this is all recorded in the book of Enoch um, 3. Okay, that's why I don't recommend the book of Enoch 3, right? So now, who is this Metatron? Because the New Testament scriptures says nothing about Metatron. The Old Testament scriptures says nothing about Metatron. You don't even hear them in none of the other apocrypha books. But you only hear about them in this Jewish mysticism writings, right? So watch this. I want to show you something here, right? I want to go to this image of a musical artist by the name of Santana. Interesting name, Santana. Carlos Santana. Okay. This is Carlos Santana. Okay. Some of you know about him because of his music and everything that he's done. This article says Santana credits human human humanity's birthplace and Metatron for his life and sound. So he gave all his credit, the credit to humanity, birthplace, and his life and sound, the music he makes, to Metatron. Okay? Interesting. To Metatron. Now pay attention. I'm going to show you who this Metatron is, right? So. Rabbi Ishmael claimed to have ascended to the heavens to behold a vision, and he claims that the Holy One sent him Metatron. Okay? So the Holy One sent him this Metatron, right? So why is Carlos Santana giving credit to Metatron? I'm going to tell you why. We're going to go there, right? I want to show you an article that was written about Carlos Santana. So let's go here to this article. Okay. Archangel Metatron told Santana to collab with prop stars. <laughs> this is the article, right? So, pay attention. I'm going to read this article to you, right? So, apparently, Metatron paid Carlos Santana a visit. And he told Carlos Santana that I want you to deal with these other artists for a reason. Now, he's going to tell you, he did, there was an interview that he had with uh, Rolling Stone Magazine. I think it was Rolling Stone Magazine, was it? Yeah, I think it was Rolling Stone Magazine. Okay, yeah, Rolling Stone. Now, listen to this here. This is, this is what he said, right? So, apparently, this is what the article says. says so, apparently, one time during his meditations in 1994... Santana was taken over by a transcend, transcendental spirit. I don't know if I'm saying it right. He was made to grab a yellow legal pad and start automatically writing whatever he was channeling from his being. So this spirit came out of nowhere and took over his body. <clears throat> it's a demon. <laughs> Angels don't get in people and take over their bodies. This is a demon, right? So pay attention, right? So he just started, it just started making, he grabbed a notepad and started writing out everything that this thing was telling him to do, right? And he said, this is his own words. He said, it's kind of like a fax machine. Mm. Turns out it was the new age character named, named the Archangel Metatron, Metatron, who can heal you of his love through the transmissions of, of the spiritual radio. Spiritual radio? I remember what the scripture says. <laughs> spiritual wickedness. Where? In high places. Radio waves travel through where? The airwaves. Right? High places, right? Pay attention. Okay. So, it was to be Santana's mission to rebroadcast this spiritual radio to the children of the world. Wow. Isn't that interesting? This can be a Satan's musical prophets, huh? 
Wow, interesting. Now, this is what Carlos said. He said, I am not Carlos anymore. I am not bound to DNA anymore. Mm. Metatribe told Santana explicitly, you will be inside the radio frequency for the purpose of connecting the molecules to the light. This is what this demon told him, right? <laughs> Pay attention. This is what this demon told him, right? Then it says, he knew what that meant. It meant he was to set out and finally record some new material. But it wouldn't make up just any album. Metatron is the architect of physical life. This is what he said, right? Another quote. What kind of album would this be? Well, Satana explained to the Rolling Stone in 1999 during an interview, I know it sounds new age, but in my meditation, this entity, which is called Metatron, he said, we want to hook you back to the radio airwave. There it is. Frequency. We want to teach you junior high school. We want you to teach to reach junior high schools and universities and high schools. Once you reach them, because we're going to connect you with the best artists of the day, then we want you to present them a new menu. Then the article says, yes. Target the kids. Just like a demon, huh? Interesting, huh? Target the kids. Wow. Bear with me one moment here. So if you see here, his plan was to target the kids. That doesn't sound suspicious at all. And yes, it does sound new age. Let, let them know that they are themselves. They are themselves multi-dimensional multi spirits with enormous possibilities and opportunities. We want you to present them with a new form of existence and tr that transcends religion. So he said, I want you to, to deal with the youth and take them beyond religion. Wow. Politics or modus operandi of education today. So I want, I want to give you something in the form of music that's going to take them past religious, uh, past politics, and past Education. This is what he said to the Rolling Stone magazine, right? Interesting. Okay, now watch this. So the game was not only to release an album, but an album that would go beyond all human social structures altogether. Enter Supernatural. Now watch this. The name of that album was called Supernatural. Okay? Supernatural. The album is called Supernatural. I'm going to show you a cover image of this um, album called Supernatural. Now, I want to make this larger so you can see this image a little clearer. Uh-oh, I'm doing the wrong thing. Hold on. Try to click on this thing and okay, let's make it bigger. And just look at some of these images, this 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 design of this album. And you can't tell me that don't look wicked. Doesn't that look wicked? Look at all of that stuff. Look at all of the things in there, right? What is this? An Indian god in the left lower corner? Uh, look at the mask and the what is this woman? What is she supposed to be in the middle there holding a fish in one hand and holding a bird in the other hand, right? And what is this thing above him 
with the wings and the face with a crown. You get what I'm saying? You see how wicked this thing looks, right? And so this is the cover of the album that's called Supernatural. Now watch this. I want to show you something because this thing is a trip. What this Metatron was trying to get him to do. So, here's the creepy part. This is what he says in the article. Here's the creepy part. The Malfo hadn't been on the charts in any serious way for over a decade or longer. It just wasn't popping off for him. But Metatron had the solution. As you read above, Satana was told to connect with pop stars of today. Basically, it was his supernatural, it was his spiritual mission to sell out as hard as possible, and it worked. Santana went out and scored corroborations with artists including, but not limited to, Rob Thomas of Matchbox 20, Lauren Hill, Creelo Green, Dave Matters, Everlast, and Eric Clapton. Now pay attention, y'all. Watch this. This is what happened with the album. Pay attention. In 1999, this heater slammed straight up with the charts. It went 15 times platinum. It won, it won the album of the year at the Grammys, plus eight other Grammy Awards. It even scored three Latin Grammys, including Record of the Year. It sold over 30 million copies and took the number one spot on the chart in 10 countries. Wow! Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? This is exactly what this demon was sent. He had a message that he was going to put in these music, in his music, and send this music out to who, to the world, so that he could captivate all the minds of the youth with his music. Isn't that something, Carlos Santana? Carlos Santana had an uh, album out years ago. He had a record that was called Black Magic Woman. Is trying to make a devil out of me. <laughs> this was an album. This was a song that he had out years ago, right? Black Magic. I got a black magic woman, right? This is what he was talking about, a magic woman. So, so we're talking about demons that's coming down here in a form looking like aliens, right? They ain't coming down here. They, they're, they're already down here. But we had fallen angels that came down here and they bred and they had these demons and these demons are now roaming earth and they, they're appearing to people like aliens. And they're um, giving people gifts and teaching people things and giving them, doing things for them, right? So he give all this credit to who? Metatron, because he met this angel Metatron, right? But I want you to understand, this is something that's been going on a long time, right? Now, a lot of you are familiar with the crossroads, okay? There's an actual place called the crossroads, right? The crossroads is an intersection in Clarksdale, Mississippi. It's an intersection of 49 and six, Highway 49, 49 and 61, okay? I'm going to show you a picture of this crossroads. That's the crossroads. Click on it, I'll make it bigger. Okay, I think that's it. Yep. Okay, so this is the crossroad. Now notice there's a man there meeting a demon in the middle of the crossroads, okay? There's actually a true story based on this. There's a blues player years ago who went to the crossroad. He said he sold his soul so that he can become the greatest blues player ever. Okay? He sold his soul, this blues player. They actually made a movie called The Crossroads where this other guy was trying to get his father's soul back or something like that because he sold his soul at The Crossroads. So now, guess what? A lot of musical artists have visited The Crossroads because they go there to try to get some type of um, power from this demon, right? One such artist that went there was Robert Plant. 
Now, some of you all don't know who Robert Plant is, but he's one of, a part of one of the biggest rock and roll bands of all time, the group called Pink Floyd. Okay, you ever heard the song, We Don't Need No Education? That was Pink Floyd. Okay, Robert Plant. Now, I'm not sure if it was Robert Plant, if it was Pink Floyd. It could have been Led Zeppelin. Sometimes I get, I get those two groups mixed up. But anyway, he went there to the crossroads, right? And I'm going to bet you many other people went to the crossroads. But I found it kind of interesting that Carlos Santana recently, last year, had a guitar festival called the Crossroads. Interesting, huh? Makes you wonder if Carlos Santana went to the Crossroads. Don't that make you wonder? <laughs> it makes me wonder. The Crossroads, right? So, again, this is about angels and demons, aliens and demons. Yes, they are the same. They are the same thing. And this is why you got to be careful of what you're dealing with. This is why Paul made this statement. You got to understand why Paul would even make such a statement. Let's go to Galatians. And I'm going to end this in a minute. I only get three more scriptures. Let's go to Galatians. And this is Galatians chapter 1. And we're going to look at verse 8. Now this is what Paul said here. He said, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which you have, than what we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So he said, wait a minute. Even if an angel come down from heaven, y'all, or appears to be an angel, see? Because it can be a demon taking on the, the, the look of an angel. You understand? Because the scripture says that. So we got to be careful when these entities and things come. We can't get so excited. Like the one lady, um, what was her name? Jay-Z Knight, right? This lady, Jay-Z Knight, she's some type of spiritualist, right? She said one day she was in her kitchen and she turned around and looked and there was this big, beautiful um, angel. She thought it was an angel. It was actually a demon. Big, beautiful angel. And he's like, hey, I'm here to help you over the road, over the hump. Because she was struggling with something. And she said, and ever since then, I'm able to talk to him. And sometimes he gets in me. And she channels this demon, right? But she said, he's so beautiful. Most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Oh, my goodness. Right out of the scriptures, right? He said, though we are an angel, come to tell you anything other than what we preach to you, let him be a curse. Don't deal with him, right? Don't be so caught up in his beauty, right? Watch this. Um, 2 Corinthians Chapter 11, Second Corinthians, <clears throat> Chapter 11, and verse 13 through 15. Now pay attention to what it says here, right? So, it says, let me check out the real ones. Oh, chapter 11. Okay, chapter 11, verse 13 through 15. <clears throat> it says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of the Mashiach. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing that his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So, basically, he's saying if Satan can transform himself to an angel of light, so can these spirits. These spirits can appear to Metatron or some of these spirits can appear unto you so beautiful like the one appeared to Jay-Z Knight. It appeared to her and she was like, oh, he's so beautiful. And now then she let this thing just get in her at will. Matter of fact, they were showing an interview. She was doing an interview and this is an old interview back in the 70s if I'm correct. You can probably find it on the internet. 
But she's sitting there talking, and she just let this spirit get in her, and then she started changing the way she talked, and started talking like this thing was in her. It's a male spirit, too. <laughs> this is weird how this thing just took over and was talking through her, you see. And so this thing is, this stuff is real, y'all. These spirits are transforming themselves. You understand? They're transforming themselves, and they're doing these things, you see. And they're coming to people, coming to people's homes, they're people selling their souls. People are worshiping them like they did of old. They worship, it, worship these spirits, these false gods, right? And so we got to be careful too. Now here's another warning. I'm going to leave you with this last warning. This is Hebrews. Chapter 13. Verse 2. Hebrews, oh no, wait a minute. Oh yes it is, that's it. Okay. Um, I'll start verse 1. It says, Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. For thereby some have entertained, entertained angels unawares. So the people entertain the angels all the time. And that's up all the time and don't realize they're dealing with an angel. <laughs> I'm telling you, there used to be a show that came on years ago, and they talked about some of this kind of stuff, how angels would pop up and demons and spirits would pop up and deal with people. And I'm telling you right now, this stuff is real. You understand me? This stuff is real. And so um, these demons and, and entities and spirits, you know, they will manifest themselves to people. You know, they will do that in a minute if they can get a person to do things that they want them to do. Most times, demons don't particularly manifest themselves because they're trying to really be your friend. They don't want to scare you. <laughs> a demon ain't going to show up with a little girl looking like a looking like a demon, right? Because they're going to scare them, right? So I remember uh, uh, some kids would have these ma imaginary friends, Right? I remember one girl kept saying, this is old lady, this old lady. And I'm like, boy, <laughs> kids talking about old ladies, right? I remember one kid was talking about this little friend that would show up and talk to him. These are demons. They show up like that because they're demons. You see what I'm saying? They manifest themselves like that because they're trying to get close to you. So you got to be careful. That's why the scripture says, try every spirit. Try these spirits. You can't just deal with these spirits. You got to try these spirits. To see whether or not they're of Yah or not, right? That's the word. The word tells us to try these spirits. And that's what we got to do. We got to try these spirits. And so, the question again, are aliens and demons the same? Well, I'm going to just show you this one more time. <laughs> Alistair Crowley's lamb. This is a demon that contacted that Alistair Crowley, Alistair Crowley actually um, summoned in a seance with some type of uh, ritual that they were doing. This demon's name is Lamb. He he uh, made contact with this demon. This demon started showing Lamb, showing Alistair Crowley all of this stuff, giving him all this information. A lot of his writings were probably based on information that he got from the Lamb. And if you look at Lamb, he looks just like an alien and what's funny is this this image is old y'all this this drawing on the right is old this image of lamb came out before they were even depicting aliens to look like this and that's something they wasn't even depicting aliens to look like this back in those days isn't that something mm, mm, mm. so again yes they are they the same <laughs> they are the same. And this quote from Alistair Crowley, just like he said, um, he said, well, they call them angels and demons now, but later on they're going to be called extraterrestrial beings or something, you know? And he's right, you know? But anyway, I hope this lesson was a blessing to you. I hope you were able to get a good understanding of what's going on in the spiritual realm dealing with angels and demons and devils and spirits and wicked spirits, good spirits. I hope this was a blessing to you and 
all of this information if you want it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can post it under the video so you can go and read and check out some of this stuff, some of the articles yourself about these demons. And like I said before, Metatron is I I do not see him as an archangel of the scriptures. How in the world can I'm Enoch? So Enoch then graduated and became an archangel. <laughs> and I Enoch coming down here as an archangel. You know, it's just that don't make any sense. It ain't lining up. But this is what the Jewish um, um, mysticism, this is what they teach. This is what um, Kabbalah teaches. And this is what they teach and this is what they believe. They believe in the, in the angel uh, Metatron. Strongly believe in him. You know? And I wouldn't doubt it if Metatron is Satan himself. Interesting. On that note, family, I'm going to say enjoy the rest of your day. Get some rest. Get in the Word. Um, and pray, you know. Enjoy the rest of it. Relax. And relax. By all means, relax. I want to thank all our moderators. And I want to thank all those that were a blessing to our ministry. And I pray that the Most High be a blessing to you. And on that note, family, I'm going to say Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom.